All right, so today we're going to talk about the HK USP45 Compact. Going to give you a, a quick little overview, kind of give you my opinions on this as far as whether or not I think it's a good defensive tool. Now, this one belongs to a friend of mine. He brought it over to have some trigger work done to it. So I did a little, little polishing on the internals, replaced a couple springs, and uh, we're going to send it back out to him. Uh, while I had it here, I wanted to go ahead and function test it once I did the work to it. Now, this is the first time I've gotten a chance to shoot a USP45 Compact. I've shot USPs in the past, and I've shot some of the other lines of pistols that HK offers, and they're all really, really well made. Now, I've never owned one because, quite honestly, I think they're too expensive. And when I can go spend 450 to 550 on a Glock or an MMP or something like that and be perfectly happy and fine with that gun as a good, reliable defensive tool, when you look at something like this that, depending on where you go, retails for you know $800, sometimes a little more on the used market, uh, these guns can sell for over $600. Well, they become a little cost prohibitive for a lot of people out there, me included. All right, so. I wanted to talk about it since I have it here on the table, since chances are I'm never going to buy one for myself. Uh, I will, however, say that my buddy got lucky. He got this one for about $500 because he bought it from a cop who was selling his duty gun, and he got a really good deal because this thing doesn't even have any holster wear on it. It was barely used. So um, he lucked out, but chances are you're probably not going to be able to find one in this good a condition for that cheap. If you can, great. That's awesome. But chances are you're probably not going to be able to. All right. So real quick, I wanted to go over the specs here and then kind of give you guys some more of my opinions on this. Um, what we've got here is obviously a polymer gun. Uh, this is a hammer fired double action, single action. Uh, we've got a safety here. We've got this uh, HK paddle, this ambidextrous paddle magazine release. The uh, trigger itself is actually really nice. Now I have already done the trigger job of this, so obviously it's nicer than it normally would have been. But uh, even so, uh, even before this, the trigger is ridiculously nice. These are, these are great double action, single action triggers. I'm um, not a big fan of the safety, but you know, it does have a safety on it. Um, if you require a safety on a gun, that's fine. I think the fact that this is double action, single action means that it doesn't need a safety on it, but that's just me. I'm sure you can uh, disassemble this or remove the safety if you wanted to, um, or you can even install an ambidextrous safety on this if you wanted to as well. Um, Takedown is pretty easy. Uh, pull the slide back, pop this pin out from the other side, and the top comes off just like on most guns out there. Now, uh, I want to talk about the internals on this thing real quick because this is the first chance I've had to really tear into an HK. All right, and I gotta say, I was very impressed. The fit, the finish, you can just tell the the quality control that goes into these guns uh, as opposed to a lot of the other polymer guns out there on the market. Now. With that obviously comes higher cost, and also one thing you have to take into consideration is uh, it takes more to disassemble this gun than a lot of other guns out there on the market to either really give it a good cleaning or even just to do what I did, which is replace a couple parts. You want to really dig into it, lighten up the trigger, replace a spring. Now part of that's obviously because it is hammer fired as opposed to some striker fired guns like the Glock. Uh, when, you, when you think of polymer guns, usually you think of a striker fired gun, and this of course is not. Um, but some of that's just because the tolerances are so tight on this, which again make it a great shooter and you know show that they really put a lot of time and effort into manufacturing these guns, but does make it a little bit more difficult to disassemble and reassemble. So obviously that's something you want to take into consideration. But all in all, I mean it's it's a fantastic gun, right? I mean it's a great gun. Um, this particular one, the 45 Compact, eight round magazine plus one in the chamber, so that's nine rounds, not too bad. But one thing I want to point out here, and it's going to come down to size and weight. Now, obviously, this doesn't apply to every 45 compact out there on the market, but with this one in particular, it's actually, it's actually pretty big for what it is. This is not a small, lightweight gun for being something that only holds eight rounds in the magazine, um, which is, you know, kind of strange, honestly. Um, first, let's compare size. I've got this Glock 19, or excuse me, Glock 17 sitting here. Now, I've got a plus two extension on it. But, uh, you know, here we've got uh, basically a, a package that can hold 20 rounds, right? And uh, we put this down and we place this on top of it. We'll line up the back. We'll line up the top here. And as you can see, uh, up here at the front, maybe quarter to half an inch longer. And down here, the only reason it's any longer is because of that plus two extension. Um, we're talking about something that holds 20 rounds versus something that holds nine. And size-wise, there's almost no difference. It's negligible. And... Width-wise, because the width of the slide on these is huge, quite honestly, compared to a Glock, as you can see here, um, this one's actually wider as well. Let's talk about weight, okay? Let's put this down here, all right? Let's talk about weight here real quick. Um, we've got our USP 45 Compact, right? 33.45 ounces, that is, with eight rounds in the magazine. Glock 17, almost the same size, 33.3 .3 ounces, slightly lighter 
and holds more than twice the amount of rounds. That is something you have to take into consideration when buying a gun like this, size and weight. And then let's talk about something along the lines of the same caliber. Let's talk about the Glock 21, right? Glock 21. Let's line it up here, shall we? We've got a Glock 21 with a plus two extension. Now, if you take this plus two extension off, they are the exact same height. It is going to be a little longer here, but still, even with the 45 with the bigger slide, the Glock is still thinner than the HK. Um, Weight-wise, obviously, this one is going to be heavier. But this one also carries 14 rounds with my plus two extension. It carries even more. So you've got uh, something that's just a little bit bigger and carries almost twice the amount of rounds in the same caliber. That's definitely something that you have to take into consideration with this gun. As I said, across the board, I think this is a fantastic gun. Very well made. A great shooter. Hands down, I would love to own one of these um, if I was willing to cough up the cash to get one. But you do have to take into consideration, even though this is a quote-unquote compact gun, it really isn't that compact, especially for the amount of rounds it carries. So always something to keep into consideration. Um, I, I, I would recommend it. It's a great gun. Um, but you do have to think about those things. You do have to think about size, weight, and capacity, and what in the end is going to work better for you. So that is pretty much it. There's my overview, my opinions on the HK USP 45 Compact. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Got any questions or comments, leave that down below, and we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks.